This is the release video for the 010, 1, 2, and 3 releases. Sorry folks, it's taken so long, but uh, that Foundry upgrade was a doozy. So first off, the GURPS Game Aid is now compatible with Foundry 0.8.x. Yay. And that's what took most of our time. So we started work on some quality of life features, and these are in no particular order. Resource trackers can now enforce a minimum or a maximum. I'll go in here to my bullets and say that I enforce a minimum, so it's not going to go below zero. Uh, I don't really need to enforce the maximum. And what this means is if it's used in a chat command, it won't allow it to go below zero, and it can be used as a determining factor. I'll show you what I mean. Right here is an if check that says, take away one from tracker number one. The trackers are numbered zero through three. And if so, then attack with the ranged longbow. I'm not certain why a longbow would use bullets, but it does. So I can do it one time and the bullets go to zero. But if I try to do it again, it reports an error and doesn't roll the longbow attack. Oh, hey, let's detour into another feature. You can see that the margin of success is now a modifier button. Of course, it doesn't really matter so much when you're attacking with a longbow, but let's say Lady Serial was doing diplomacy and then going to roll the diplomacy against a reaction table. You can see the roll table formula is 3d6 plus at gmod c, which is at the global modifier and clear afterwards. The user can click made it by two, and you can see down here in the modifier bucket that it is plus two for margin of diplomacy, and then can roll on the reaction table, and you can see the result is 3d6 plus two. So we'll get back to the next resource tracker feature, which is you can now have costs some number of tracker elements, whatever they are. In this case, somehow Lady Serial now has an energy reserve, and to get this bonus on the broadsword, it costs one from the energy reserve tracker. Now the format is the same as the chat command, so it can be TR and in parentheses, either the name of the tracker or just the number, TR2. So you can see it here in the modifier bucket. And when we roll our attack, the energy reserve went down one. The next feature was actually added by one of our users. We now have a tabbed sheet if you don't have a lot of vertical space, and you can see the various elements in the tabs. Since the combat view and the tab sheet basically both solve the same problem, reduced vertical space, we're going to demote the combat view and change this to tab view at some point in the future. The combat view will still be available from the sheets menu button. The next feature I shamelessly stole from Fantasy Grounds for any Fantasy Grounds converts that are playing in Foundry. You can drag any rollable item to the modifier bucket or the 3d6 down here, and if you let go, it's a blind roll. This works the same way as the all-seeing eye pyramid in the GURPS rule set in Fantasy Grounds. Note, however, in Foundry 0.8.6, blind rolls are broken. They know this and should have a bug fix in 087. I was going to show you the next feature, and then I noticed I can't import, and I forgot we added a new system setting that only allows importing if the user is trusted or higher. One of our users runs five games, I believe he said, and he doesn't trust all of his players in all of the worlds. I'll turn that feature off and reopen the window, and there's the import. So here's the next feature. Let's say you want to actually keep track of your equipment usage in Foundry. You can do that now, even though this data comes from the import. I can go into an item, here I'll do copper coin, and check this box. This will cause copper coin to ignore what's coming from the import and just keep what's in Foundry. And we show this little file icon over here to let you know that's the case. So to show you what happens, I'll increase the copper coin and I'll increase the silver coin, which has not been set up, and then I'll re-import. You see the copper coin stays the same, the silver coin went back to what the import is. And we're trying to add more features so that you can use your Foundry character sheet to keep track of your character. As mentioned before, you can update the notes, and so long as you add to the end of the note, it will be kept during the next import. So here I'll add in a comment and save it. And when I re-import, the comment stays there. Well, the next feature that we've added is that if you move your items around, the import process will do its best to remember where you left it. So if I decide to move the first aid kit into the carried equipment, and then I re-import, it's still in the carried equipment. If I move the backpack into the carried equipment and re-import, it gets sorted differently, but it's still in the carried equipment. If you ever want an item to go back to what it was during the import, just delete it. If the item doesn't exist here, but comes in the import, then it will be added in. So I can just delete this first aid kit, 
and re-import, and you can see that it appeared back in the other equipment. And the import even does a pretty good job about remembering where things are contained. So I just created a new large pouch that's a user-created item, and I'll move the first aid kit into the large pouch. And if I re-import, it stays there. I can take the large pouch and move it into the backpack, and I'll re-import, and it's sorted, but it's still in the backpack. I can collapse the backpack to show you that everything's in the backpack. So the idea is hopefully the player can use the character sheet to add notes and move around their equipment and keep track of their consumables, and it will all stay in Foundry and will not be overwritten when the next import comes through. And the next feature is just kind of snicks and giggles. If you add an item to a character and you move your mouse over the item or anything provided by the item, it flashes the image. Nothing fancy, but if you're spending time picking a really cool image, it would be kind of nice to see it. So the next feature is for our foreign language users. If you are playing in a different language that we have a translation for, then the on-the-fly formulas support the translated attribute names as well as the English attribute names. So if I wanted to roll against Alejandro's will, or Fontage, I hope I pronounced that right, I can use Vont. And as shown in the preview, there's now a chat command to access the light features for a token. It's documented in the user's guide, but the chat command basically lets you set the dim light radius, the bright light radius, the emission angle, the light color, the color intensity, the animation, which is one of these, the animation speed and animation intensity. And of course you can turn the token's light off. So you can do things like set uh, dim to six, bright to two at angle 45 degrees. The color is red with the intensity of 0.3 using the energy animation. I think it's with a speed of two and an intensity of five. And you can turn it off and then turn on a torch. This next feature came to me as I was watching Mook's run through of the Hell to Play adventure. One of the players asked, hey, who has the best sneak? So I built the show chat command. This is only available to GMs and you can type in any attribute or skill, partial skill name, and it will search through all of the tokens in the current scene and show you those attributes and if they have the skill. So this is showing all the perceptions. Only Honest Abe has scrounging and only Bog has brawling. Funny, the treasure chest has a perception of one. And these are active buttons. So if I want to roll Honest Abe's scrounging, I could just click this button. And of course we included bug fixes, lots of bug fixes, but a big one is the GCA export has been updated. It was incorrectly calculating the weight of the containers that had stuff in them. And in the apply damage dialog, if you want to apply, uh, do something other than apply injury, this now goes up instead of down. And I think that's it. That's a lot of little teeny things that we've added that hopefully will increase the quality of life. And we're not going back. Foundry isn't going back, so we're just going to continue on the 010 releases and hope that all the modules catch up. And as always, thank you for watching.